Hi everyone, it's Terry. Today we're going to continue in our studies in embroidery and embroidery edit on the luminaire. Before we begin, I want to answer a question that was actually asked in my Facebook group, Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire, and that's a question about how to put the embroidery foot on the machine. It's a very good question because there are a couple of safety points that I want to mention based upon things that I've seen in my group. By the way, my group is about 2,000 members strong. I think you would like the group if you join and you'll find out that everyone is willing to help you and answer questions. For safety reasons, you want to lock your screen. It's going to lower your presser foot. You'll notice that the screen is inactive and you'll see that this is blue. Now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the foot. You'll notice that I have my foot on my machine so tight that I can't loosen it up by hand, and that's what you want. Locate your screwdriver. You can have it in position one or two, and by the way, it just moves easily into those positions. This is in your accessory box, and if you want to tie a lanyard on it, you can. Turn that screw so that you're turning it back away from you. That loosens this up. Now, if you want, raise the presser foot bar which actually makes it easier to access, and you can remove the foot that was on your machine. There are a couple of things I want to talk to you about, though, about this foot, and this is the W foot. So this is the foot you want to use for embroidery. Make sure that you select it for embroidery for several reasons. One is this arm sweeps as it's cutting threads, so it sweeps them away, and that's important. You'll notice it's spring activated, and you'll also see that it fits on your machine against that presser foot bar. So let's put it on the machine and I'm going to hand tighten this, but I want to show you something. Look at this, this moves. So even if I hand tighten this and think I have it as tight as it can go, it still has some wiggle room. Get that screwdriver out, turn it towards you until you really feel that you can't move it forward anymore. Unlike the needle, you with the needle, you want to tighten it enough that it stays in place. But on this, you want to make sure it's secure because I've seen people hand tighten this and it ends up bent. And you don't want it to, to bend, but more importantly, you don't want to damage your machine or your needle bar. Okay, that's enough about the, the foot, but you notice these keys are inactive because the screen's locked. Now let's go back. And let's deactivate that. And now we're ready for embroidery. So today we're going to talk about embroidery edit again, but we want to talk about several things. The first thing I'm going to do is go into settings and go to page nine, and I'll choose the original thread chart on my machine because I want to show you something that is another question that comes up from time to time. We're going to go in and select a design. I'm going into category 14. If you do not own the upgrade kit, you will not have this category, which has 75 designs, and there are some beautiful designs that are built in to this particular category. What we're going to do is we'll select this little red bird here, or it looks like a cardinal to me. And what we're going to do is look at the thread colors. You'll notice here that you see minutes. Well, these minutes tell you how many minutes each color will stitch out. And you notice the colors are all different. Sometimes whenever you go select another thread chart, and what I'll do is select Isocord, so I'll go to thread brand, I'll choose ice core, but I'm going to show you that I'm taking you down a path where it's not going to change. I have to delete this design actually for that to take place. So let me go back. We'll choose that thread or excuse me, that design again. And here we go, we'll choose set. Now you see ice cord. You're noticing that two of these colors are the same and that's because the software on the machine cannot determine what would be the correct color for that third color. Now, honestly, I typically pull colors based on what threads I have, unless I really bought thread for a 
design, which is what I used to do in the beginning. But nowadays, if, if that happened to me and all my threads are isocord, I would just fix or find a color that was different. Okay, now we have this design on the screen. I want to talk to you about a function in Edit, which is stippling. You'll notice you have two icons up here on the top. And let me show, show it to you with my finger because I want to choose stippling first. Now you do have stippling in my design center, which we'll cover in other videos. When you select stippling, it's going to fill up to the largest hoot size. And what you need to do is wait a moment as you select hoot sizes to see what that stippling is going to look like. So you'll notice that you have distance and you have spacing. You can increase the distance. This is distance away from your design. And we'll let it think for a moment because I like to have a little bit of space away from my design. If you spend all this time stitching out embroidery, do you really want your stippling right up next to it? It's a personal preference. You can also adjust your spacing and th this spacing can be very large or it can be very small. So you can see that here. And this, the machine does a great job of creating a continuous design ar around the embroidery design here. Let's go back and make it really small so you can see what that looks like. And it may be your preference, it's possibly not mine. To me, this would be too, too heavy and it would really take away from that delicate embroidery. So choose the size that you like and we'll just leave it at eight millimeters and choose okay. Now, what I want to show you is what happens if you try to add other designs here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to add and let's go select a circle and choose number two. And this is a shape. And you can see that this, we have our design with the stippling. We have the shape. I'm going to make the shape larger by going to edit to size. And this shape is just going to sit here in the middle of that design. How could I change it? Well, let's see if I could go into stippling again. And we'll choose a different size. And we'll just choose OK. And you now see that it looks like that it has double stitches on top of the previous design. And to prove that point, what I'm going to do, this is grouped. I'm going to ungroup it and I'm gonna move things away. Now you can see it. So this isn't the way to go about this, but there is a way you can. So we're going to undo and we're actually going to get rid of the stippling first. Now we're going to add that shape. So we'll go back into shape. We'll select that oval again, number two, and choose set. Let's make it larger, go to size, and we'll make that larger. Now let's go add that stippling, and we'll go into our stippling. Let's choose that smaller hoop size. You'll notice if it's grayed out, that means that for 100 by 100 hoop, this design is too large. So that's good to know. So. I could choose 150 by 150, even though I don't have this hoop size, and I could do that and add another shape. Let's just try 200 by 200. Okay, I like that. I'll choose okay. Now what I'm going to do is add another boundary box, because I really don't own a 200 by 200 hoop. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to create a design that's different. So what I'm going to do is add the shape, and let's go in and let's add a square. And let's choose number three and choose set. Let's make this larger. We'll go to size and we're going to resize this. All right, and that looks good. And now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and let's choose okay. And let's go back to stippling again. And then you notice that it's filled up the largest hoop size. 
what I want to do is to choose this 272 by 272 and choose OK. And now you can see this design. Now, if if I chose undo, I can uh, I could go back and I could actually change the size of the stip stippling. It remembered that last size. But do you see how I was able to create that? In fact, let's do choose undo. Let's go back. And what we're going to do is cha change that spacing. And we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll just leave it on the largest hoop size so you can see it. And I'll make it a larger stipple so you can see it. That's good. And let's choose OK. All right, so now you can see how you can accomplish this and have different sizes of stippling and how to build that design. It will work the same way with echo quilting, by the way. We're going to go ahead and everything's grouped together. We're going to choose delete and we'll delete again. And actually what we need to do is we do need to make sure everything is grouped together. There we go and choose delete. And that way we delete that design. Let's go back and for this time, we'll choose a different design. We'll go into category eight and let's just choose the carrots and let's choose set. I love this design. I think it's so pretty. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to edit and we're going to go back to where we see stippling, but this time we're going to choose echo quilting. And by the way, if you have echo quilting in PE Design 11, you'll see that you have two different types of echo quilting. One of those will be what's on the machine, and the other one will be one that's unique to PE Design 11. What I want you to notice is echo quilting follows the shape of the design in the software. As it reaches these corners, it's going to follow the corners. So it follows that shape as far as it can. And to really make that point, Let's go and extend the spacing of that so you can really see how this looks. Give it a moment. Everything else is going to work the same on echo quilting. The one thing I want to mention to you is you do not have echo quilting in my design center. So if you want to do the echo quilting, you'll want to do it in embroidery edit. So you can see how it's follow, following the shape or contours of that design. I'll reduce it just a little bit. And let's go to eight millimeters. We'll give it a moment because it is digitizing all those lines and my machine has been busy thinking as I've been recording. So you can see here how it's followed those lines and also followed the shape of the, of the actual hoop. If we choose different hoop sizes, you'll notice also that it will recalculate those stitches. So give it a moment and here you have it and you choose OK. Again, it's grouped. If you ungroup this design and you move something, you can actually select different parts of it. And we'll choose the interior portion and you move it away. So you can see that echo quilting. I'm Terry Mathet. I hope these videos are helpful to you. I tried to record videos based on questions that are asked in my Facebook group, just stitching with the Brother Luminaire, and also to help you understand how your machine works. And by the way, I'm not a, a representative of Brother. I just do this to pay it forward. If you do like my videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and join us in Facebook in the Just Stitching with a Brother Luminaire group. As I mentioned earlier, there are several members in that group who really know their machines and they're willing to answer questions for you as well as I am. Thanks and have a wonderful day. I appreciate your time.